on top of the morning to you, tip top, totally tubular turbo tectonic tour truckers. Uh, we're uh, trucking along, lads and ladettes, headed to uh, home, the great, great land of Canada. So today I uh, delivered in Sykeston, Missouri. Uh, it's a lovely little ice cream plant down there. Uh, friendly staff, you know, all those those good things. I uh, I, I kind of have a, an interesting day because I, I didn't do anything, um, and it kind of hurts me a little bit in the way because I uh, like I've, I've I've done a split sleeper birth, but I'm still like. I, I, I have to kind of play around. I, to, I shouldn't say I have to play around with my logbook. I can't play around with my logbook. It's an e-log. But I've discovered that my logbook does not record my 14 hours. So where, you know, again, at, at, the, at the risk of rehashing some old details or anybody that's into trucking or follows trucking has probably already heard about this a trillion fold, right? Um, E-logs don't allow us to really do much of anything in terms of editing logbooks. You're kind of stuck by your, you know, your hours of service for the day. Um, and one of the big ones that a lot of people dislike is the 14-hour window. So as soon as I start my day and go on duty, I have 14 hours to get everything done. Uh, and that 14-hour clock cannot be paused, the exception being, I believe, a split sleeper bird. Um, split sleeper birds can get confusing for people, and myself included. Um, you know, the jury's out on what, what part of the world, or sorry, what part of the world, which, you know, if, if Canada and the U.S. recognizes it, or if it's just Canada, um, you know, generally speaking, it's just easier to not even attempt to do it. Um, but what I've discovered is, is that my company's shitty e-log does not record a 14-hour window. So I don't, you know, I, I, I guess to kind of bring everything back into uh, into focus here. I uh, started this morning about 7 a.m. my time, which is 6 o'clock central. Had a delivery for 7 a.m. central, which 8 o'clock my time. Um, I'll just keep everything in Eastern time for the sake of, uh, you know, simplicity. Um, when I, uh, I got there, no problem. Get my delivery off. Uh, everything's good there. Then I got to go up from Sykeston, Missouri to St. Louis. There's a tank wash we deal with there. Oh, you want to do just a hair under the speed limit. Um, which, again, no big deal. Booted up, but two, just a little over two hours to get there. Um, so that's all I've really done. I did two hours and 20 minutes of driving. I started just a hair under 20 minutes away from my delivery this morning. Just just far enough away to, you know, get the get the chocolate all shaken up so that it would come off fairly easily. Um, so it doesn't kind of settle and get stuck around the, uh, the exit belt. Um, so I got to the tank wash around... PM my time, and the guy's like, "Yeah, we're not gonna get you in until 5:30." I'm like, "Well, shit." Um, so I, you know, sit there. I took a, a fuck of a good nap. Oh man, shut the truck off, opened the vents in the parking lot, and just oh, I slept like a rock. It was great. Uh, I get up when they call me, say, "Yep, yeah, come on in the bay." Go to pull in the bay. A shunt truck fucking flies around me and takes my bay. I'm like, "What the fuck?" So I call them because there's no, I, I think there's certain lines of trucking where it is like literally, you know, and I would never do this type of stuff. And I've, I've put my foot down a couple times before um, where if I got to race people for a bay or for a door or any of that shit, then, then you're not getting your freight. Um, I, you know, I've, got, I've got a friend of mine that hauls steel and you literally get into a physical line and people cut you off all the time. Um, you know, I did it when I hauled gravel briefly. There's a line going into the quarry, and people would just cut the whole line and fuck everybody over. Um, you know, if, if I have to fight with a bunch, like, you know, not literally, but if I have to muscle around a bunch of other drivers just to deliver your freight, you can, you know, you can call me when you got an empty door, but, you know, and nobody fighting for it, and then I'll come deliver your freight. Um, I've never, I've never, like, I've, I've, I've had situations where it seemed like that was going to be what happened, and I've had to put my foot down with, with the, the, uh, the staff, and they've confirmed to me that, no, 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 that's not the way it goes. Um, I, the last place I, or not the last place, the second last place I worked at, I hauled glass, and, uh, we used to load out of Wichita Falls, Texas, 
and uh, I, they, the Wichita Falls plant, it's usually fairly busy. They got a lot of guys waiting to get in the days because it, it, it can take you know two, three hours to load. Um, you know, they're they're literal like you know 11 foot high by 14 foot long panes of glass. You know, upwards anywhere from six millimeters, four millimeters to uh, you know like two inches thick type of thing. Um, so. It's, it's in certain packs. It's actually pretty uh, pretty stable. I was impressed with how well it goes down the road without breaking. Uh, but the uh, what I the day I got there, they were they were running late. Uh, so like I my appointment was for 2 p.m. Uh, I got there at noon, and they were just getting to I think it was the 9 a.m. guy. So there was him. There was an 11 a.m. and then there was me. Um, so. I, you know, I talked to him inside, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the way it is, okay, so he said, they said, okay, this this guy, once he's out, uh, you know, Maverick is going to back in, once Maverick leaves, it's you, it's perfect, so I seem, you know, I wait, 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 again, by this time, it's because they're running late, it's noon, it's already three, four o'clock, five o'clock almost, Maverick pulls out, and I start to go, and a, and a different carrier just fucking cuts me off and backs into the bay, and I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? So I go inside, and they're like, well, wait, what? And I said, look, guys, if I'm, I'm going to level with you, sir. If, if I have to fight with other drivers to get into that bay, I'm going to turn around and leave, right? I'm not trying to sound like a dick, but I'm not, you know, rushing and basically getting into fist fights with drivers to secure my spot to load. And they're like, no, 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 man, that's that's not how it works here. That guy shouldn't be there. Like, well, hold on, we'll, we'll get it sorted. So, much to that driver's chagrin, they kicked him out of the bay, and he was livid, because he was the, what would he be, because I was a two, I was a two, so he would have been a 5 p.m., and it was, again, by that time, it was 5.30, 6 o'clock, um, so he was, he was, there was a screaming match with him and the, the staff, because he didn't want to move, and they told him, like, you, there are people here who are scheduled before you that are still not loaded yet, they're getting loaded before you, um, so he eventually pulled out of the bay, I backed in, and he immediately comes over and starts asking, how long are you going to be? How long do you think you're going to be? I don't know, man. Probably the three hours that it takes everyone else? Fucking, he didn't, he didn't give me shit. But he turns and starts cursing the air and walks away. It's like, dude, like, I've been waiting just as long, man. Like, you know, it is the way, it is what it is. It's, that was, you know, part of, uh, they were busy that day. It was, they were behind schedule. It's, what do you do? Like, now, I usually got pretty good treatment there because I got along really well with the loaders. Um, you know, most of the places I've ever I've ever dealt with, I'm usually, I usually get a fairly, well, I usually get along fairly well with the loading, unloading crews. It's, it's typically only like the check-in counters at like the door swinger type places where it doesn't really matter how pleasant you are or how, you know, how friendly your demeanor, they want nothing to fucking do with you. Um, you know, there's there's not much that can be done about that, I suppose. But uh, next exit. I uh, you know I I usually I usually have an okay time. So I uh, you know I, I got to the tank wash today. That's, I I called the guy. I said like you know what's what's going on? So you know, we fucked up. The shun truck was supposed to get in there before you. It was on the paperwork. It just the guy didn't look at it properly when he called you. So I said, okay, he's like, it's, it's just, a, they're just a quick wash. So, you know, it'll be maybe an hour. Like, yeah, okay, I mean, I'm here now anyways. It doesn't really matter, right? The guy was real apologetic. I'm like, man, like, if I were to start screaming and yelling, it's not going to help me any. So, you know, it, looks, you know it, it, it is what it is. Um, stamping my feet and getting upset isn't going to get me any, any faster service. You know, it's, it's, and it's not like they're sitting there slacking off. It's, there are other people who are supposed to be in there before me that were scheduled to be there before me. You know, I, I, again, if, if I get very, very wound up over somebody showing up and scooping me, I can't, you know, uh, right, or I can't justifiably expect to be able to scoop others and, you know, have effectively no repercussions or, no, uh, no sense, not even no sense of guilt, no, like, that person won't be upset about it, so, it, you know, again, it's no big deal, but it's usually, especially for chocolate, it's a, it's a two to three hour wash, so I, you know, 
around. It's nine o'clock at night now, and uh, I'm just leaving the tank wash. So, according to my logbook, I have seven hours to drive available. Um, technically, in my head, I know that I am now over my hours because I started at 7 a.m. At 9 p.m., I've been at 14 hours. Um, however, again, it's uh, it, kind of hard to, to just throw the whole day out the window. Um, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to, <laughs> dispatch had this idea when they called me, they're like, uh, you have to load to uh, Chicago. Uh, it loads at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be there. I mean, you know, oh, uh, I mean, we could probably get that loaded for you. Like, yeah, you probably should, because that ain't happening. I'll be there sometime afternoon tomorrow from the looks of things. Because I know, you know, I, again, I'm a day person. I'm not going to be able to drive all night. Uh, at some point, you know, probably somewhere around midnight, I'm, I'm going to have to go to bed. Um, nap, nap or no nap, I'll eventually need some sleep. So I... Uh, and also because I want to be able to drive tomorrow. Because I don't have enough hours to get there tonight. Um, however, if I get, again, three, four hours up the road, sleep, get up, I drive another probably three, four hours, maybe a little bit more than four hours to get there. Um, I'm taking the shortest route this time, so it, it should be a little bit quicker. I can't actually see how long it is because, you know, it's on my phone. I, uh, I should be somewhere around eight hours away, give or take. So that means that I'll get there sometime, you know, I, I guess tomorrow or late tomorrow morning and have enough hours, holy fuck, some shit out here. Have enough hours left in my day to be able to get back into the States, get, you know, half of the way, give or take to the delivery and then finish the delivery in the morning. Uh, the only downside with this delivery is it's one of it's the one where they want me to scale both in and out, and I got no fucking time for that. See, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a problem because they have a uh, they want you to scale in. Scaling in is easy because I will just go to whatever truck stop I stop at and hit up the cat scale. Scaling out becomes the problem because. And I think I've touched on this before in my videos. It's, it's they want you to go to a little tiny hole in the wall flying J that is like, again, I, I've said it before, it's, it's anarchy in there. Like the, uh, the amount of, of trucks trying to get in and out, it's, it's, it's literally, this, it's, it's, I guess, slightly larger than your typical quarter gas station, um, yet it's for semi trucks. So like you're lined up on the road in traffic waiting to get into the parking lot to get fuel. Um, I went there once and said I spent over an hour because I couldn't even get on the scale because there was a truck broke down on the scale. Um, but once you got in, you couldn't get out. So I spent over an hour waiting in line for the trucks in front of me to get fuel and pull ahead and get fuel. I didn't even need fuel. I couldn't get fuel at that truck stop. I literally sat there for an hour for absolutely zero reason. Um, and I, I, I said at that point that I was not going to that truck stop again. I think that was a massive waste of my time, um, you know, for something that I could get done somewhere else. The hard part is, is when I'm leaving, I go to the tank wash, wash the trailer, and then go to reload. So, or I do a trailer switch a lot of the times there. So what you run into then is they want an empty weight prior to the trailer being washed because that once you wash it, you've washed out any material left in the trailer. So they want to know how much they got out of the trailer. So they want, you know, you're fully loaded versus once they decide to stop unloading it type of thing. Um, and the issue is there are, I mean, it's in, it's in Chicago. It's on the West End, but it's in Chicago. So there really are no, like you would have to drive, you know, an hour out of the city to find a truck stop that you can really realistically get into scaling it back out of. Um, now, luckily they don't want you to hand bring them the scale out ticket you can just email it to them um but you know then you're you're driving that far away from the tank wash um it, it's it's not so bad if uh if the way it's set up right now i'm supposed to deliver and then turn around and come home with the trailer um because that means i likely won't be getting the trailer washed um and so i can you know i can grab a i can grab a scale ticket from anywhere i stop 
However, if they want me to wash, that means I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And apparently, there is a uh, between the they've, they've authorized. They've authorized. I go to, again. I don't. I don't go by like some of these places. Like we want to use this scale. It's like if that scale sucks, I'm not using it. Fuck off. If you don't like it, then I'm not going there. Um, I mean, again, that's kind of like the, the bit of an ignorant way to do it. But I again, I don't like fucking around in. Shitty. I, I he said. I, my biggest thing is, is I don't like to have to fight with people for a spot in line, or you know, a, 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 to get in on into the truck stop off the highway, like or off the road. Um, because nobody, there is no such thing. People don't form queues in North America. They just they fight for the front, and that's all. That's it. Um, so, and then you know, truck stops are notoriously under supervised when it comes to things like that um usually all the truck stops will do is it's musical chairs and at some point in the night they'll come out and kick out all the losers who didn't find a parking spot um you know whether they can legally leave or not oh we're calling the cops you gotta leave or we're gonna tell you rather than enforcing the guys who you know stole your spot drove into a spot you were trying to back into like i've seen i've, I've not really had to I've not really had people do it to me, but I've watched people fuck other people over. It's like, you fucking dick. But again, aside from knocking that guy out, breaking into his truck and moving it for the guy, really nothing I can do once his truck's parked there. Like, how do you move it, right? How do you convince the guy to move it? All he's going to say, no, point his window's up and fuck off. Like, he can destroy his truck, I guess, but then all he's got to do is call the cops. Again, there's, there's no law that says, you know, there's there's no such thing as, there's no law that says, you know, basically of dibs, more or less, right? You, if you say, well, I was going to back into that spot, well, fuck you. Um, so it, it's, you know, it, it can be very frustrating, and I don't, I don't like doing that, because I also, I know that my temper can, is not the greatest. Um, so... You know, at, at some point, there's there's the chance that I might get into some real serious trouble. Um, you know, I've almost I I think I think I already told this story in one of my videos. I might not have. I got I got I almost got in trouble uh, several like two months ago because a guy tried to come around me. He was making a right turn, and the guy there were two right turn lanes, and I was straddling both because. You can't make the right turn from the right turn lane. If you take the leftmost right turn lane, cars will try to scoop you on the inside, and then by that point, you're already into the turn, and you kill them. So most guys block both lanes so that nothing happens. The guy came around me in the rightmost left turn lane and tried to come around me on the right, expecting me to slam on the brakes and let him squeeze by because he immediately needed to make a right at the next light. So he wanted the whole intersection, or the whole intersection to himself for me to block the intersection so traffic wouldn't get behind him to allow him to make the uh, the right turn. Okay, this guy come flying around me and now he's like hovering just just around the same speed as me here. It's kind of silly. He's slowly gaining on me. Um, I lost it. I, I jumped. I, I stopped and blocked the whole fucking intersection. It's downtown Barry. Fucking Maple View Drive off the 400. Anybody who's local will know what that is. Busy intersection. I come flying out of the truck with no fucking footwear on because I don't normally wear shoes when I'm driving in the fucking snow and slush. Fucking lose it on the guy and he just keeps screaming back on me with his window most of the way up, telling me to fuck off. It's he can do what he wants. It's, he can, you know, he can. He basically said I can do what I want. So I, I turned around, I ripped his fucking hood beard off. I really shouldn't have done that because if he did, had decided to call the cops, I. Whoever's right or wrong in the intersection becomes moot at that point. I just destruction of property, so I'm going to get charged. Um, he started to get out of the truck, and I, oh fuck, I just about pulled him out of that truck. But he saw me coming back to the door. He slammed the door and locked it again right away. I said, I, I told him, get the fuck out. Let's fucking go. Let's give everyone in this freaking intersection a show. He said, no, no, I'm staying in the truck. Okay, well, fuck you. Then I'm calling the cops. I said, perfect, call them. I got to go get my fucking boots. You sit right there. Like, fuck you. I said, okay. So by the time I get my boots, I guess he had decided to calm down. He never called the cops. He calmed down enough to realize that what I did was wrong, but what he did was in the wrong. Uh, so he said, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna call the cops, but you shouldn't have taken my hood off or my you shouldn't have, you know, ripped my mirror off. I said, 
you shouldn't have driven like you shouldn't have been like you shouldn't have driven the way you drove. And he said, well, that's you know, I I can do what I want. And it's just okay. I'm not starting this argument again. You're done. He said, yeah. I said, okay. See ya. Got back in my truck and left. Um, and like I said, he immediately took the the right lane. Like he was going from the far left to the far right and made the next right. So it's like. Again, you piece it together. The guy wanted me to slam on the brakes so that I would stop myself and all the traffic behind me. Um, he would come around me, and then he would have no vehicles in those right two lanes so that he could just, at his leisure, cut over from the far left to the far right and uh, make his right turn. So it's like, well, that's that's pretty fucking ignorant. Um, and again, those are the kind of things you see here guys talking here. You hear about guys getting stabbed or shot in truck stops now, fights over parking spaces and all that shit. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't want to get involved in that. I don't, you know, I, 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 I have a knife. I don't carry a knife, right? I, I, I bought a, 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 an assisted folding knife for, like, work-related shit. But, it, you know, in a pinch, it'll do. Um, but as, as a Canadian, it's, it's difficult. Like, I can legally own and carry a firearm in the United States, but I can't take it into Canada with me. So I've got to, uh, you know, I, I, I effectively have to either find a way to store my firearm in the States somewhere that I can access it when I enter the States. Um, and, well, that's really the only option if I were to own a firearm in the, in the States. And the problem there is, is that I don't always cross the same border. I typically cross in Detroit, but a lot of times I cross in New York or Buffalo. So there's the chance that I, you know, for several trips won't have access to my firearm. Is it worth spending the money? Um, you know, again, you can buy a Glock for 600 bucks. Uh, you know, you don't you don't need anything bigger than a nine millimeter nowadays. Most people are not carrying body armor when they're out doing shit. Truck drivers certainly aren't. Um, however, that problem still exists. Uh, even if I get into an argument or a fight and it escalates to a point where I do feel the lawful need to use my firearm, I've then still got to, you know, then it's still a massive shit show afterwards because I've got to effectively prove that I I was in a position where I needed to use my firearm. Um, and again, I when I have that sort of advantage, my temper is pretty calm. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm, I guess I'm one of those guys that, like, if, if, if it's, how do I put this? If it's, if it's a, if it's an even fight or more of a, uh, I'm in, I'm in a, I'm at a disadvantage. I'm more inclined to get wound up faster. Um, or, uh, not even escalate things to violence because I've, I've been in very few fights in my life, but, or, you know, I'm, I'm more inclined to, mouth off and say, okay, like, what, what the fuck are you going to do? However, when I know that I'm kind of in the, uh, in control of the situation, whether it be that I'm, you know, if, if, if I'm physically more capable than the person I'm in an argument with, or I'm, again, I'm carrying a firearm as an example, uh, I'm more inclined to stay calm because I know that I, I guess it's that confidence of, of having a you know, a, a way out versus being nervous about potentially losing whatever fight you're about to get into. Um, so again, I like I'm I'm not uh, I'm not inclined to immediately draw a firearm and start you know fucking busting caps because I a I I'm a, I'm a bit of a firearm aficionado, so I, I you know not to a huge extent, but. Enough that I've, I've, I've practiced with firearms a little bit. I've trained with firearms a little bit. I know the functionalities of most most firearms that are, are commonly used nowadays. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I'm not a uh, I'm, I'm I'm fairly calm when it comes to those sorts of situations. Like I won't. It's weird. If if I if I if I'm looking at a fight that I know I'm going to win, I'm less prone to escalate it to a fight. Mostly because I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm. Maybe it's a little unfair, right? I had a years ago, well, not even years, it was a year ago. I had a friend of mine that, I, and I might have told this story too. So I apologize if I'm starting to rehash a lot of stuff. Uh, my life's not that interesting. You guys will just have to fucking deal with it. I uh, okay. What the fuck? I mean, you, you passed me, and now I'm about to eat your fucking asshole here. Like, go around the guy, or I'm gonna go around you. Um. I know he's a set of doubles. Okay, if you haven't decided.
decided to go around this guy by the time this car gets clear you we're we're not gonna we're not gonna fucking do this no he's pulling away um what was i gonna say i you know, a year ago i uh, I, I grew up with a uh not even grew up with a, I had a friend of mine for years who i i shouldn't i i think i'm i'm doing myself a disservice by calling him a friend um he was a very, a very small, you know, like a, a little guy, and had that kind of typical little man syndrome. Like he was like five foot five or something like that. Very skinny. Um, didn't have that much of a problem with girls. Um, he had a lisp, like you know, like lots. I shouldn't say lots of problems or anything like that. But he, uh, he, he said he, he de- certainly got more action than I did growing up. Um, yet for some reason, he constantly sought to one up me in front of women, and I, I even to this day I don't understand it because maybe because I was never I've never been a small guy, so I've never had to worry about it much. And typically, again that that non competitive nature, like I you know I've, I've had times at parties where a girl and I hit it off really well and. You know, out of nowhere, somebody that she likes more comes up. And she kind of passes on me and starts hanging out with him. It's like I'm, I'm not, I'm not fighting for this guy for her attention. If, if her attention changes that quick, I don't fucking want anything to do with her. Um, so I, you know, I, I never felt like I needed to compete with my guy, my my single guy friends, for the attention of a girl at the party because if she wasn't interested in me, if I couldn't maintain her attention throughout the entirety of our of our interaction, then she wasn't the person for me, right? Whether that means that I'm not that interesting and the other guy is to her, or that she's, you know, maybe, maybe just doesn't, she's going after the guy because he's hot or whatever, and, you know, she's shallow. And it's either way, you know, wasting time and effort to try to draw her back, her interest back to me is, is pointless in my eyes. Um, so we spent a lot of time trying to degrade me in, in front of others. And for most of our, Again, I use air quotes here. Most of our friendship over, I think it was close to 10 years I knew him. Um, he always, he constantly tried to be little me. Um, you know, I, I got the, the receiving end of a lot of the fat jokes, which is, again, all my friends give me fat jokes, and that's fine. I don't really care because, to be honest, I don't care about things that you can change, right? I, I, I'm, I'm on a diet right now. I'm dieting pretty hard. Um, you know, I... Uh, I'm pissed at myself, and it might have been, part of it might be just the difference in scales, because I'm using different scales at truck stops. But I lost five pounds last week, and appeared to have gained four back in the last two days, so I'm pretty sure that either one of the scales is off, either I didn't lose any weight, or I, I lost the weight, the other scale's wrong, or, you know, maybe I did gain the weight back, I don't fucking know. Um, but I, uh, what was I going to say here? This guy's all over the fucking place, so fucking, he's the one that passed me slow down again or I'm going to get too tight to him and end up getting a ticket for following too closely. Um, you know, but being being fat is something that I can and, and I'm working on to change where, you know, if I had a club foot or a missing eye or something, I can't do anything about that. So I'd feel a lot worse with being teased and, you know, kind of do the same thing with others. I'll tease people for things that they could change about themselves, but not things that they can't, right? You know, I got one friend whose mom's dead. I don't. I try to. I still let them slip out occasionally because it's so used to it. But I try to drop the mama jokes because he doesn't have mom. You can't fucking. So you can't change that. He can't magically have a fucking mother like and then make fun of, right? Um, you know, the same thing. This one particular friend was short, and I make fun of him for being short because he can't grow taller. Like, holy fuck. Okay, this guy is gonna get past. I'm getting tired of this shit. You know, on him again. Um. inevitably see me and try to fucking speed up. Um, but he, you know, he ripped on me quite a bit. And again, it, it always got more severe when we were at a party and there were some single girls present. And I, again, I, I, I let it go nine times out of ten because usually I, I run the problem of, of the massive size disparity, which means that any girl is going to think I'm a massive piece of shit if I turn around and just fucking punch this kid's fucking head off. Um, 
And obviously that doesn't really work in my favor. See now he's fucking gated on me again. Like, are you for fucking real, buddy? Oh, this pisses me the fuck off. Um, well, we are going downhill, so let's fucking let gravity do the fucking work. I'm just gonna stay here because I think we're gonna pass him when we go uphill. Um What was I gonna say? So I, I, I left it most of the time, and again, it usually meant that if, if there was a decent girl there, she'd understand that what he was doing. If, like, you know, the guy's name is Evan. I don't care about using his name. It's like, Evan, you're a fucking asshole. Like, Danny's a super nice guy, and you're being a fucking dick. Um, but the last time it, it happened, um, same thing. There was a, a girl that I had a little bit of interest in. We, we hung out a bit. Um, it never went anywhere, but, uh, well, again, she, I found out that she was rather shallow and kind of dropped me for one of my better-looking friends. Um, I dodged a bullet, apparently, so that was okay. But I, uh, yeah, I'm gonna fucking give it one for because this guy's really fucking irritating me. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I was, I, you know, we're at the party, we're hanging out, and, uh, I had recently had a friend of mine get me a job in driveway paving, uh, the asphalt paving, and I, I, I'd already at that point been doing the pilot car thing, so I'd already basically kind of become soft and couldn't really fucking do the job anymore, right? Um, you know, like, this guy's fucking trying really fucking hard, and he's, he's matching me for fucking speed, like, and now we're going uphill, so he can obviously go that fucking speed, but he chooses not to. Fuck you. Fucking little fucking little man syndrome. Guy's fucking like four feet tall, his fucking arm up on the wheel, seat fucking leaning way back. He wants to be fucking cool. So 75 miles an hour. Fucking. And I'll immediately go down to 65 when I get around in front of him again because that's fucking retarded. I'm gonna gain on him that fucking much, and then when I go around he fucking honks on it. No, fuck you. Um so I, uh, where was I here? I, I, I quit the job after four days. It's like, no, nah, I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, you know, left on good terms. The guy actually paid me cash so that I wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to worry about taxes for the week. Um, he said he appreciated, like, he, he could see that I, at that point I'd already, like, kind of pretty much stopped being in shape at all. Um, so he said, yeah, like, to be honest, I could see that you were, you were having a hard time with the physical labor, like, you know, you were, you were starting to slow down a bit, and the, uh, I guess the other guys had started to complain, I was pretty upset about that, because they never said anything to me, but 